God damn, boy. That is everything I wanted. Everything I could have ever wanted out of that chorus. You ready? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those that are new here, my name is Peter Barber. I'm primarily a professional opera singer and music producer, but most importantly for today, I am an Imagine Dragons mega fan. I think Dan Reynolds is a genius. I've gotten to see them perform in concert. I've made extensive covers of their music. I love this group. And they just dropped a new song called Eyes Closed, literally premiered like 10 minutes ago. I resisted watching the premiere, but now we're here. Guys, this is going to be a full first time reaction and vocal and musical analysis of this group. So I will be pausing primarily to talk about Dan's vocal technique and instrumentation and arrangements and anything else I hear from an audio engineering perspective. Um, you will learn a lot, probably. You will learn a lot about this song and musically and, and how it, how it uh, kind of fits together and weaves together and you'll learn about Dan singing. So if you're here for that, stick around. If you'd like to watch the original video all the way through and then come back, I'll leave a link in the description below. Guys, last thing, if I enhance your Imagine Dragons experience, please do consider joining my Patreon for free to check it out and as little as $1 to get benefits. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. Eyes closed, Imagine Dragons. I'm back from the dead, from the back of my head Been gone and facing horrors that should never be said The wrath and the grit from the pit of despair Been taking every whip and word I've never been spared Hey, the music video is absolutely insane And I usually won't comment much on music videos Because it's not my expertise But very, very cool Look how jacked Dan looks Jan just looking straight up saucy in this video um, Okay, so... For this, for this first section, right, this first verse, essentially, when Dan starts singing, we have this really cool, like, distorted out, um, kind of mellowed out low guitar sound, low electric guitar sound, possibly, maybe even actually likely a bass guitar sound. Um, and Imagine Dragons does this cool thing where they often have a lot of acoustic instruments, like if you watch them perform live, you know, guitar, bass, uh, uh, drums, obviously vocals, and then they also add a lot of electronic elements, a lot of synthesizers and other uh, modulations that you you do in you know the post processing of audio. Um, so they always have a really unique sound there, and it, it it lends to this kind of like dark pop vibe they've got going. Um, let's talk a little bit about Dan's voice. I'm back from the dead, from the back of my head Been gone and facing horrors that should never be said The wrath and the grit from the pit of despair Been taking every whip and word I've never been spared Something he does so well is he really kind of blends the genres of or blends the styles of singing and rapping and he's got such good articulation of the words he just, he's able to spit out words so clearly and we've, we've heard him do this in, in a lot of the Imagine Dragons music where he will seamlessly go from, you know, singing more actual melodies, you know, doing what would stereotypically be called singing into more what would be stereotypically called rapping. But he does this cool blending of these two styles of vocalisms. And um, even when he is singing, sometimes he'll have a, a few words and a phrase that he'll spit out really quickly. And it's like, oh, that's that's part of his skill set. That's part of his toolkit as an artist. In the back of my head, been like from the back of my head, from the back of my head, like just spitting those words out really crisp and really clean is a, is a whole different skill than just singing, of course. I'm back from the dead, from the back of my head, been gone and facing horrors that should never be said. The wrath and the grit from the pit of despair, been taking every whip and word I've never been spared. They and just one more thing before we go on. This is, of course, you know, right in the middle of Dan's range. So we're not getting any extreme highs, any extreme lows. And he's actually singing. Do, 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 do. He's staying. Mm, he's staying right on that A flat three 
for pretty much the entire phrase. So we're not really getting a melody either. That's why it's kind of leaning a little more towards the rap. All right, now we'll go on. From the pit of despair, been taking every whip and word I've never been spared. They say tomorrow's never promised, honest. They say angels are among us. Lock me up in the bed. Oh, God. It's about to be such fire. It's like, oh, man. Ah. Uh. It's 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 hard it's hard uh, not to just watch straight through, but I do want to do an analysis because that's what my whole channel's about. Um, in this pre-chorus, we get Dan going a little bit higher in his range, and we also get backing voices uh, that come in as well. We've still got that kind of cool, dark, mellowed-out bass guitar happening, and some other synths as well that I didn't point out. More atmospheric synths, right? You have you have the elements of a song that are really clear and that stick out, and then you've got the kind of atmosphere elements that just kind of add to the ambiance of the uh, of the whole track. Uh, this chorus is about to slap, dude. Tomorrow's never promised, honest. They said angels are among us. Lock me up in the mess. God damn, boy. Give me that dubstep shit. <laughs> Woo! That is everything I wanted. Everything I could have ever wanted out of that chorus. Ugh. I'm going to have to make my own version of this song. I got to do it. I'm sorry. It's incredible. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about that chorus. Let's Lock talk about me that up in the maze. Turn out, turn out the light. All right, so we get Dan going higher. His voice getting more efficient and powerful, of course, as he ascends in his vocal range. The vocal folds are coming together tighter. Gets more of that, like, belt, yell-like quality. Living up in the maze. All the way up to F-sharp 4. Getting up towards... that. That is getting up into his upper range. Still very comfortable for him, but... You know, anything above like an E4, above middle C, you're getting into where you kind of, you have to put a little more effort into the singing if you want to maintain that full chest connection. So that's what Dan's up to. We get this absolutely thick kick snare pattern on the drum, which is where we get that whole, we get that whole drive from. And that's why the, that's why the vibe, really that's the main reason why the vibe changes so much in this chorus is when those drums come in it just it completely changes the game Lock me up in the turn out, turn out the we also get dan's voice has clearly been modulated down an octave you can tell just by the 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 timbre and the vocal quality in those in those harmonies happening in the left and right ear it's not dan singing down an octave Lock me up in the maze it sounds like because Dan's a tenor voice, I'm a bass voice. It sounds like my voice singing those notes. If I was like over darkening my sound, let me up in the maze. It's got that kind of like really big throated sound. That's the sound you get if you take a voice and just modulate it down without accounting for what's called formants, which I won't get into. But it's really cool to hear. We hear Dan's voice in the true melody right in the middle, and we get these modulated harmonies happening in the left and right ear. Lock me up in the maze. We also get Dan echoing, whoa, 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 something like that. He's echoing, kind of like a call and response. He has a lead melody line, and then that kind of echo line uh, comes in and follows up. Uh, but it is, it is for sure Dan doing both of those things. Me up in the maze. Turn out, turn out the light. Um, the bass guitars, it's the same, it's the same main 
you know, dark bass guitar that started out in the first verse, but the pattern's different. Something like that. So we get a new chord progression in this chorus here. Turn out, turn out the lights. Okay, so then Dan gets way up in his upper, all the way up to tenor high B. Same high note if you've heard that very famous opera song, Nessun Dorma, the high note at the end is a high B. So Dan was just singing a high B in a very different style, of course. Something they do really cool here that's used a lot in electronic music and a lot in dubstep music, and I'll talk more about dubstep later. I personally produce, I produce heavy electronic music. Um, they do this like kind of fake out drop where you're expecting the next part of the chorus to hit on the one and then nothing hits and it hits like a beat later. That's when he says the word cage. So you get this big build up, you expect this big hit coming, we don't get it, you're faked out, and then it hits a little bit later. Really, really great technique. Right here. Oh God! So there we get that. Um, there you get to hear the modulated voice very clearly. That's not Dan truly singing those notes. He's singing it higher, and then they're modulating it to make it sound like this. Um, it's funny actually. In opera, we we do a little bit of that to create darkness and space in the sound, um, creating a bigger like a resonating chamber to make a loud sound. In opera, we sing with an orchestra without microphones so we have to be very very loud on stage um and so we do a little bit of that darkening of the voice to create some of that space but this in this production this is audio engineer this is dan singing higher and they've modulated his voice down and of course it's not like they're trying to convince us he's singing lower it's it's an effect right they're they're going for an effect Before they get into that, listen to how all those elements drop out, and it's just like it's just like Dan's modulated voice and like a synthy bass foundation and drum, but all of the rest of that, you know, treble atmosphere gone, and then we get the dubstep shit. Absolutely amazing. I wonder what it sounds like they used Vital. I'm trying to think of which synth design program they used to design that dubstepy sound. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dubstep's so cool, y'all. I'm not gonna get into it, but some of the some of the best music producers in the world, some of the most creative produ music producers in the world are in dubstep. And it's a very niche genre, so you probably haven't listened to much of it. Go explore. It'll it'll blow, listen with some nice headphones, it'll blow your mind what these producers do. Um, this is a really, really cool section, and it's and it's so simple, right? You have this, you have this really cool dark dubstepy synth sound that whoa, 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 and then you have the drums, and then just a little more atmospheric stuff. But it's a very simple section, but it still slaps. You get a good kick snare pattern and some good and a good dubstep dubstep synth. It's gonna slap. And then more, turn out, turn out the lights, more modulated vocals. Also, look at Dan looking saucy. Look at these traps. Look at these traps right here. And the forearms. Dude is straight. He's a tank. And he's like six foot four. I would love to meet him someday. I'm hoping to get him on the podcast in the next three to five years. That would be really cool. I could do this with my eyes closed. Turn out, turn out the lights. Those traps, dude. Saucy. Less 
Alright, so drums gone. Doom, doom, da, doom. That that bass guitar, even more kind of washed out and atmospheric, is now here, and we get a lot of other. We get our treble atmosphere back. Um, again, this is you know Imagine Dragons classic. This is this is a lot of synth design, right, to create this very atmospheric space. Um, very very cool. They're create they're creating a whole universe with the sound. All the places I've been, all the blood that I've read. I've been broken down and beat up, but I still get a hit. I can't believe how good these drums... Like, it's it's a whole technique to record live drums and make them sound this good. And it very much sounds like a live drum kit. Um, and you can edit the samples and whatever, but they sound so crisp. And again, Imagine Dragons does this balance between live instruments and electronic and this, these drums drums are like leaning towards like EDM drum samples because they're just so crisp and so punchy um just just a like clearly they are very a very clear feature you know and a lot of music drums serve as the rhythm the timekeeper whatever but in a in, in imagine dragon songs a lot of them um in dubstep especially in this one for sure the drums are very the, they want the audience to be listening to the drums clearly and and being motivated by them. Um, I love that. I love when drums get such a such a highlight. They're not subtle. All the places I've been, all the blood that I've read, I've been broken down and beat up. Let's go. They've got some cool what's called glitch and wash going on, which is just like those distorted. It's all like the distorted sounds that, you know, it might come from like an old radio or it might come from like something malfunctioning with electricity. Um, there's a really cool effects to put in when you're kind of trying to create a little turbulence or madness in a sound, kind of put it in the background. Listen for that glitch and wash happening. Um, and it's kind of going all over the place in the what's called the stereoscopic image is how the sounds are laid out left to right, front to back in a mix. Throw it all away. All the places I've been, all the blood that I've read. I've been broken down and beat up, but I still get a hit. All the faceless embraces and the tasteless two faces killed and resurrected because I'll never be dead. This hit tomorrow's never promised on it. Just one thing we get differently here in the pre-course is we get that we get that clap build up. That's the main difference, I think, between this and the and the first time we do it. Okay, so, God, it's so good. This is no sh one of my favorite Imagine Dragons songs ever, and that is saying a lot. Second chorus, very, very similar to the first chorus. I just want to uh, kind of look a little more at Dan's vocal technique when he gets up into the really high stuff. <laughs> Something they're also doing with his voice in this chorus is he is multi-tracked like crazy. So not only we get the, the main lead vocal in the middle, not only do we get the modulated vocals happening around, we also get his lead vocal multi-tracked and panned. And so it's like you're hearing like probably six or seven of Dan's voice right now doing similar things. Some, you know, doubled, tripled, some modulated. Um, but it gets this huge image, like his voice is everywhere at once. When Dan gets up into that really high belt, I think 
a little bit of grit naturally comes into his voice. Um, and it really adds to the kind of rock side of their, of their, of their artistry. Um, and adds a little more intensity into the sound. We get a little more of that turbulence and actually air coming through the vocal folds when he's doing that gritty singing. Um, absolutely epic. Um, if you think about like what he does going into, the, I think, the second chorus in Enemy, um, I think he gets up and I think he also sings a high B in that song in chest voice. And it sounds very similar where it's like he's really stretching those vocal folds out to stay in chest voice and a little bit of grit uh, and intensity gets introduced into the sound. There's, oh, there's one new added element that that I don't think that was there in that in this in the first rendition of that section. So here's something that I'll be interested to hear. I'm, I'll go listen on streaming after this. I wonder if they include the rock sound effects in the streaming version or if they've just included it in the music video. My guess is they've only included it in the music video because it sounds cool. It kind of works with the dubstepy dark pop vibe anyway. But if you weren't watching the video, you might be like, what are all these? Why are there rock sounds? I don't understand. And that's very common with artists to... Um, include video sound effects but not include that in the streaming release like this down section where there's no music happening or not what you'd expect on a radio music to happen probably not in the streaming version the song might be over I don't know how long it is there's probably another chorus. And when the day broke buried in violence, something made my mind up. I will spend these days as an island, alone and far away. Lock me up in the maze. Turn out, turn out the cool. All right, so we get a cool little bridge section here. Much more mellow, much lighter. There's no bass at all. There's no drums at all. And then, of course, final chorus. Bass and drums come back, full effect. And when the day broke, buried in violence. Something made my mind up. I will spend these days. We even get acoustic guitar. Did not expect to hear an acoustic guitar in this song, given the rest of it. This is a this is a complete like deviation from the rest of the song. Violence. Something made my mind up. I will spend these days as an island. Alone and far away. Lock me up in the maze. Lock me up in the Listen to that one. That was so that's Lock me up. Lock me up in the maze. So it's two octaves down. So I can sing it, but they've modulated Dan's voice two octaves down. Lock me up in the maze. This is an island, alone and far away. Lock me up in the maze. I think we get we get there's there are more more drums happening right we'll get like a double kick and we'll get a we'll get like consistent hi-hats I think that's different from the previous choruses I won't go back but I believe that the drums have been revved up in this final chorus in addition to some other elements creating again that madness that's so good in a in a final chorus of a song like this Far away, lock me up in the maze. Turn out, turn out the lights. Making me question my sexuality, as always. Dan, look at this man. The physique is is godly. Look at that. Oh, yes, dude. 
All right, so what we get here, oh, they, they've done this so, so well. We get the, the dubstep elements and the drum kick, but we, which we normally had post-chorus, but we also get Dan continuing to say, I can do this with my eyes closed, and we get some of those, those harmonies he's singing in the background. So we get you know, some critical elements from the main chorus with that dubstep -y section post-chorus, and now they've got them happening together, and it's just amazing. Okay, I was wondering what the story was. I am obsessed with this song and this group and Dan. Oh my god, it's This is better than I ever could have hoped. This is this is This is maybe oh, This and Enemy. This and Enemy are my two favorite Imagine Dragon songs ever. Absolutely amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something about the music, about Dan, about his vocal technique, about music production elements. If, hope you guys gained appreciation. That's what I'm here to do is help you help you hear music clearer and gain appreciation for it. If I've done that, please do consider joining my Patreon for a dollar a month for benefits. Consider checking out my merch. This is a new uh, new merch line with a new with a new abbreviated logo. That's a great way to support me. Otherwise, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell and any other thing, anything else you want me to analyze from Imagine Dragons or anywhere else on the internet, leave a comment. Thanks for tuning in guys, much love.